which cards be, where are you the benefits benefiting are. from these cards? Yes. Cards which give you more points by just going for grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. Like groceries too. Let's to not get into linking your weekend, linking your like you know regularly. linking Instacart so and all these other things to get extra points and all that stuff. Yeah, so that's something like the American Express Gold. So you mm -hmm. can get that. That's your point harvester, right? <laughs> I think mm -hmm. this is kind of that we've brought it back, back. to like what yeah. I what I was trying to say. A ton of people are just more afraid of like they either are in credit card debt, right? Or again, they are spending way more than they make. Or and I think that's where but, Dave Ramsey comes in for I, them. Mm -hmm. Now it's getting people because literally uh, there's somebody that tried to tell you know, listen, you're traveling a lot. Why don't you get a, a travel credit card? And they're like, no, I can never do that. I don't want to get into debt, right? So, but because they've been conditioned huh? by the yeah. Ramsey mm -hmm. to never ever look at a credit card positively, that's where they're like, in it, honestly, where they are, they feel like, you know what, I don't have the burden of debt. To them, that is peace, which is what it but, teaches, but by then, the way. But then I think what is the, the issue is here is that people don't understand how credit card works. Mm -hmm. And they because, need to learn. Uh, a credit a credit card is not is not a debt. You're not supposed to use credit card as debt. Basically, what you're supposed to do, and especially how you 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 can make these credit cards actually make money for you. In terms of, if you're using a debit card mm -hmm. to pay all your bills and everything, there is no reason why you should not be using a credit card and get to run through that first money back from the money of what you on, on what you're doing. Points. Don't buy miles uh, and what, cash what, back. Basically, what yeah, what it means is just use a credit and and I like the term charge card better than credit card, right? The way American Express call it stuff, it's a charge card. There's no credit here. What you use, you pay. It's simple as that. There's nothing like we're giving, we're extending credit to you. No, we, we're going to pay it for you. But at the end of the statement period, pay it off. When you pay it off, you get rewards for it. Those rewards actually uh, make life easier for you. They give you access to a lot of things on the cheap and some of them for free. And those things you can use as in they open doors for you that actually if, if what Dave Ramsey has taught you that you're not supposed to be in debt, these things actually give you access to things that you would have paid more for a cheaper rate. Okay. It's just that people don't want to learn about this and people are scared and are anal about cash is king, but just cash is king, but also... Cash a flow card is, is not, king. A, cash a credit card is king. Day new more, but credit card is just money that, okay, I'm using it for now, I'll pay it back and I'm done. Okay, I'm going to read a few comments here and then we're going to wrap up before we go to our, our closing topic of the day, which I know a lot of people have been waiting for. And real quick, regarding credit cards, when I was working, you know, like uh, in the credit card unit of, um, I've worked for PNC Bank, I've worked for Wells Fargo, I've worked for what is now Capital One here. It was called Chevy Chase back then. And here is an interesting thing that uh, also I think is important, even for people who are paying off credit cards to understand. Uh, first of all, is to, to have the understanding that the house always wins when it comes to credit cards. You know, like Stephen uh, Bertie said that. Yes, the house always wins. And the house so, is the bank. So, so, so there's 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 two ways in which um, you know, like these uh, these cards make money. One of them is in transaction fees. The more you swipe, the more Amex gets money on both both on interest and both on uh, on the swiping fees because they own the card. Most of these other banks they don't own uh, that transaction processing. It's owned by Visa or MasterCard. So Visa or MasterCard gets that transaction. So they also have an incentive to want you to swipe, swipe, swipe. So there's an issue of those people who don't pay off their cards. That's just a no-no. You know, like you're going to end up paying so much money. And then there's an the issue of the people who pay their credit cards. But here's the thing about these point cards, you know, like which I brought up at some point and, uh, uh, on my timeline. And some people wanted to chew me off. This is what happens. The American Express. This is what happens I'll pay sometimes. The fee. This is what happens <laughs> when uh, n forget about the fee. Okay, fine. The fee, the the seven hundred dollar fee. That's ridiculous for an average traveler. You know, you travel two, three times a year. That's a ridiculous fee you're paying for a card. But uh, but for someone who travels frequently, they might get value out of it. But what tends to happen 
when you get mm -hmm. these cards and they start giving you uh, certain benefits, you start spending in areas that you would normally not have, not spend have spent. You never I had. You never not disciplined as a not yeah. 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 Mika, 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 Mika. Mm -hmm. let, let me talk about because I have data. I'm not talking based on uh, what I feel. Uh -huh. I have data because I used to work in a bank. So you tend someone who never used to have a subscription for, uh, for example, for Netflix. New York Times. Okay. Now because it's being offered, for they get the subscription. Someone who never had a subscription for Hulu. I mean, and it's up to me if you had it from before. If this is something that you are spending before, but there's there's a trend that shows these benefits that people are offered, they actually tend to take them when they were not using them before. So what happens that um, they, I know Amex especially advertises that, um, you know, out of this $700 fee you're paying, you're going to get $1,400 value. Very nice, you know, very nice return. But there's a few people, there's a 5 a 10% who actually profit from that. But I'll tell you, 90% will start spending in spaces that they were previously not spending. They will start going to hotels that they were previously not going to. <laughs> and that's the actual goal. You know, they want you to go to these places where you're previously not going to. So now, yes, you're paying off, you're not paying any interest. But now, because what you want him to hotel is a uh, hundred bucks. Hundred bucks. What's on a motel six? What's on a motel six? To say hotel is a hundred bucks. To say red roof in. Uh huh. come to a red roof in. But now, because you have this card, you're now going to stay in a in a certain hotel because Red there is a benefit. Yes. And you see, when you stay when you stay in those hotels, there's also other things that you're spending on based on staying in those hotels. So here it is. M maybe Mika, you know, like and all those people, are, maybe you're all in the five percent because there's a five between five to ten percent are the ones who actually profit. Ninety percent. Wanakamato. And that's the reason why I tell people when it comes to these cards with uh with fees, be very, very careful, especially when you've accumulated them. You have one that's seven hundred dollars, you have another one that's uh five fifty, your chase, you have Ile Venture X, your capital one, <laughs> that's uh three ninety five. These things add up. So you have around uh two thousand dollars a year. The thing is you have around two thousand dollars a year. Them. You have around two thousand dollars a year in in fees that you're paying. The more cards you have, the less you're gonna spend on each. You know, like when you have one or two cards, all your spending is divided between between these one or two cards. When you have ten cards, now your spending is spread out across so, ten cards. So it becomes more difficult to meet that minimum. And Mi there's a ten percent. Mika, you're in the ten percent. Mika, let's, okay, let's say can that. I can Be, I you're in the ten percent before, before but ninety percent. Mika, yeah. what were you saying? No, I was saying there's no need for anybody to have two premium cards, right? Yes. As in, you can have, okay, you can have two premium cards from two different companies. You can have uh, the Venture X and you have Capital One. You can have Sapphire and have Venture X. Uh, I don't see why I should, you can have Sapphire and American Express, the platinum at the same time. You can, or you can have a Sapphire and a Gold. Like it, the thing is, when it comes to these cards, you have to know which cards where are you the benefiting from these cards yes. cards which give you more points by just going for grocery shopping mm -hmm. like groceries too let's to not Google get into linking your linking your like you know regularly. linking instacart so and all like, these other things to get extra points and all that stuff yeah so that's something like the american express gold so you mm -hmm. can get that that's your point harvest right and then yeah. now for the platinum benefits you can go to the venture x which has a 250 fee but will give you nearly everything that the American Express Platinum could have given you, right? The only difference maybe is just the lounges that you're going to, you're not going to get into the American <laughs> Express lounge, you're going to get to the Capital One Express lounge. So it's you also learning how these credit cards are and figuring which one is your point harvest for you, how you're going to get points and how, what you, how your daily spend is. Don't yeah. get a card just because a card gives you access to this. I have Get a card based on how your spend is and then look how you maximize from your spend. I have a, a minimum. I have a minimum threshold for my for my students. I tell them, especially because a lot of them come from the Dave Ma Dave Ramsey man mindset. And so when I'm winning them back into understanding credit cards, I say, okay, start with at least three. 
if you like to travel, pick an airline and stick with it so you can get miles for that airline. So if you like Delta, get an Amex card. If you like to travel and you want to stay in a hotel, pick a hotel and stick with it. So you, now you can start to rack up points for that one specific hotel. So get a card, go to that card, go to that hotel's website and apply for the card that they're offering. Mm. And then get another card that gives you cash back. Now when you travel, you are flying for free, you stay for free, and you eat for free when you get there. Just have those okay. three minutes. Uh, uh, let, 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 let me dispute something on that. Okay. The problem with the problem with sticking to one hotel and one airline is that you're limited on how you can use the point. How you can make it better is pick one luxury card. Yes. Pick well, one, remember pick, this is pick, a... one, pick one. Pick, yeah, pick one of the pick one of the luxury cards because the, 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 what you get from that is that the, the points can be spread al- among various. Yeah, me and you can do that, but I'm talking to the Ramsey people who are like trying to get back to credit cards. I have to win them in a little bit. (laughs) 